Technology is uh, all the time presented as one of these things which is going to change education. And this um, presentation is about technology and education, and I'm going to actually say a bit of a funny thing, and that is technology doesn't necessarily change education at all. It doesn't necessarily do that. And um, what I want to talk about is I'm going to use the, uh, the, the word affordance uh, to describe um, uh, what's possible with technology, but I want to use that word because we can do entirely conventional things with technology. We can build entirely conventional uh, relationships of learning. Let me give you some examples of very ordinary things we can do. So we have this thing um, which we might call the didactic, didactic pedagogy, you know, the, the, the traditional classroom. And what we might do is we might replace that with um, a flipped classroom, which is, you know, in a term that's on everybody's lips at the moment. And what we might do is we might say, okay, instead of the lecturer or the teacher standing at the front of the room and telling student things, we might put that on a video. Um, and um, instead of doing the test in the classroom or in a special examination room, the students might do a quiz, an online quiz. Now, does anything change in terms of the relationship of knowledge? No. You know, it's trivial really that we've moved the lecture to a video and we've moved the test to an online quiz. Um, the relationships of knowledge are exactly the same, which is the students consuming knowledge, um, they're remembering that, coming back with long-term memory and they're answering the questions correctly. So really that's technology, you know, reproducing, continuing, reinforcing traditional pedagogies. Okay, it's fine that we might want to do that and it might be actually more efficient. It might be that instead of having 30 students in the room, we can have 30,000 students in the room and that's called a MOOC. Okay, so that's interesting, but it doesn't change in any way uh, the nature of education. Another example, um, you know, in the old days, uh, we use textbooks at, at school. So let's say we had a textbook um, which wanted to describe the faces of the moon. So there was a paragraph about how the, the, uh, the moon uh, travels around the sun and a sequence of figure one, figure two, figure three, which explained uh, the way the faces of the moon work. Now, what we might do is we might produce now an e-textbook and you know what, you can just do this, swipe it with your finger because it's on a tablet or it's a, an e-book uh, and you can actually simulate um, those relationships uh, between the moon and the, uh, the, the earth and the sun. Okay, um, so in a way that's, um, you know, we might think it's very fancy because it comes on a tablet and it's colour and it moves, um, whereas a textbook didn't. But in fact, in terms of what's going on conceptually, cognitively, um, as a relationship of learning, it's exactly the same. So what this, none of this I think is interesting, right? The interesting question is, what are the things that we might do uh, in education which are in some senses, uh, in some senses different? Uh, and hence the word affordances. Now, so what I'm going to do in this presentation is go through what I think are seven things um, which could be uh, profoundly different. But actually, there's a bit of a twist in these seven things in that the seven things um, are actually old things. They're actually things, not things that technology produces, but things that technology makes easy. And we didn't do them much before because they were quite difficult to do. Uh, and now because technology makes them easier, we can do them. And therefore, because these opportunities are, open out, are opened out, these affordances are, are offered to us, uh, we can actually uh, do something in education which is um, broader than what we did historically in the traditional classroom. So here we have um, a, a little map of these seven affordances. It's a kind of a map of where we're going to go um, in, in this particular presentation. And what I'm going to do then is go through each of those affordances uh, one by one.